What's up guys, Manny here, let's do a little experimental hangboard session, shall we? But first a little preface to this craziness, in a recent episode I explained how the hardest beast maker slopers seem to prefer a half crimp approach in terms of gripping technique, which is counterintuitive for a sloper, on which most climbers would rather go for an open grip of course. I tried to explain this phenomenon with the extreme friction component of these holds. I had the impression that the only way to achieve enough friction to not slip off was to move the hanging force as much to the fingertips as possible to create as much pressure as possible and a half crimp allowed me to do just that. Things got interesting quickly, I got very mixed responses in the comments, one camp agreeing with me 100% while others said it's complete BS, the three fingers open grip is the only way to go, as open as it gets basically. I was baffled by this discrepancy because my own three fingers open is finger strength wise not far from my half crimp, despite that I had no chance on these slopers with a true three fingers open grip. Someone commented that a guy called Emil Abrahamsson campuses easily on these by using an open grip, with the caveat that he is very tall and has huge hands which could be helpful on holds like this, and Emil himself answered essentially confirming the claim. Could hand size have something to do with it? Or is it just that some beast makers have so much more friction than others? Then a distant memory of a climbing movie came to my mind, it's called Beastmaker and it features a Bavarian climber called Haley Cotter who in the film climbs a 9a slash plus and you also see him training for it doing one armors on these Beastmaker slopers. Again tall guy, big hands. How can he as a tall guy have so much better finger strength to body weight ratio than my pathetic self? I despaired as I struggled to hang these both handed still. The thing I could not comprehend was just how these big hands, used openly with big bearing surface, could be helpful when I on the other hand, yeah, pun intended, have to keep bearing surface small to achieve enough pressure to achieve enough friction to not slip off. Could it be that these tall guys screw around on another end of the equation to make things work? Could their greater body weight help them somehow with more pressure on the board, allowing them to have greater contact area with those slopers, making more open gripping possible? What if the agreeing crowd in the comments just represented light people, while the disagreeers were just a bit heavier? Of course I had to put this hypothesis baby please to the test, so I grabbed a couple of weights, a rope and a pulley, and attacked the beast maker, and the results were quite stunning. So let's check it out. Welcome back to the hangboarding studio, let's make a couple of hangs, first of all, I'm gonna brush this little bad boy here. This beast maker is super dry, just like my hands. So we're not tricking you here with moist be beast makers or moist skin or anything like that. Let's step on the scale. Let's take that body weight with a little bit of clothing here, as you can see. Now we're checking in at 68.4 kilograms. Let's see if we can hang this guy. Okay, <clears throat> not 100% warmed up yet, I would say, 2-3 seconds hang time with the normal method or with my go-to method, which is the half crimp and no thumb and with corners. Let's make a little experiment. I'm gonna now add some weight. Oh, look at that. Now we're checking in at 80.7 kilograms. That's quite a massive difference. If it was almost properly holdable before at body weight, this should be now basically impossible, right? On any other climbing hold, that would be the case at least. So we're gonna brush this bad boy again to keep all the other factors the same because we wanna be as scientific as possible here. Okay. <laughs> Easy! Easy brother, easy, easy air, I would say. So now, we're gonna make another little experiment. Just like this stuff here. We're gonna actually remove this kind of weight from my body now, okay? As you can see, we got a little pulley set up here. Take this into my harness. Well, let's step on the scale again. Checking in at 59.2 kilograms. That's around 20 kilograms lighter than before. Keep that in mind. But in terms of climbing holes, this is just another world of difficulty. Okay, this is like if I would lose, I don't know, if I would be thin, <laughs> if I would be a lightweight for my body. Okay, this is crazy. Same gripping method, half crimp with corners. 
without thumb. Almost, almost. <laughs> it's way harder. Isn't that fascinating? We found a climbing hold, which is just crazy much harder the lighter you are. It would be super interesting to see a you know a kid with crazy finger strength to body weight ratio trying this because all the finger strength <laughs> doesn't really help you much if you don't have the body weight to create the friction to be able to hold this thing. If my hypothesis, baby please, was correct that I'm using the half crimp because that one allows me to put the holding force to my fingertips where it then creates more pressure, where it creates more friction, which pre prevents me from slipping off, we could conclude from the other way around that if it's easier with more weight, with more body weight, that this would allow me to use the three fingers open grip then instead of the half crimp, right? Creating enough friction with the three fingers open grip as well. So we're now gonna test this hypothesis by adding some bonus weight again. I'm stepping on the scale, checking in at 76.5 kilograms. So that's pretty much 10 kilograms heavier than a normal body weight. I'll brush the holes as well, of course. Doable, doable. But if you paid close attention, then you might have noticed that I'm now using less additional weight than before, less extra weight. Why? Because I made some test tanks before with the full bonus weight, which is around 12 kilograms, which put me around 80.5 kilograms in total. And I figured that there, finger strength became the limiting factor instead of friction. So we see this fascinating relationship between finger strength and friction. If you have the finger strength to get your weight more and more up, it's somehow going to be easier and easier to hold these slopers because the friction is going to be greater and greater. But at some point, of course, you don't have the finger strength anymore and then you have to reduce. So that's pretty much, you know, these two factors and of course, including body weight, put you at a certain position on these slopers and also make certain grip types easier than others. For the sake of completion, we also have to test the three fingers open grip without additional weight and with taking weight off, of course. So let's step on the, on, on the scale without anything added. Checking in back at our 68.3 kilograms. Yeah, still possible. Let's try to remove some weight again. Scale time. So now we're looking at roughly 58.8 kilograms. <laughs> no chance. No chance, man. It's just taking too much weight off my body. I can't create the friction to hold this thing with three fingers open. No chance, man. This is crazy how, how huge the difference is, actually. You would assume that it's just the other way around, but not on these holes. We found some magical climbing holes. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. I don't know how about you, but I find these findings really interesting. This could explain why tall, big guys, heavier guys, do a bit better on these slopers, you know, than the small uh, ones, apart from the hand size factor. You know, it's always said that tall guys have taller hands, and taller hands are an advantage on slopers. I'm not so sure, I can't really think of any physical connection with this, um, with this th th kind of thinking, you know. What makes much more sense to me is that taller guys are simply a bit heavier, therefore create a bit more friction on these kind of holds, and therefore it's a little bit easier for them to hold them eventually. Um, it also has some interesting implications, I think, for outdoor, boulder outdoor bouldering on very slopey holds. Not necessarily sandstone or granite because these are, you know, very high friction surfaces. But what, what with limestone, you know, 
and you have these really greasy limestone slopers on something like this maybe even more body weight can sometimes be helpful who knows anyway uh, if you enjoyed this episode drop a like of course that's always appreciated and drop a comment as well drop your experiences as well with this kind of topic it's always interesting people seem to be crazy about this subject so yeah it's it's just fascinating anyway i hope you enjoyed this episode thank you so much for watching and i'll see you soon in the next one bye